Hi crafty friends. Today I want to take you on a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to make those pasties with those cool bow embellishments using a silicone mold and liquid plastic. Liquid plastic is super easy. You just use a one-to-one -one ratio. Mix it up. Make sure to stir or shake your uh, liquids beforehand and you pour it into a mold. I bought this mold on Amazon and I will include a link to that. You can buy all kinds of different molds. These are traditionally used for making candy. Next, we'll make our pasty base, which I like to use Peltex. Use a circle in the shape of the size of the pasties that you would like. And I'm using a ruler here to find the center point of my circles. I'll also be using the point in between the two lines to draw another line. This will indicate where I need to snip with scissors. This once folded together creates the dome shape which is the shape of the pasty and you will see here in just a moment as i demonstrate there are a few different ways to assemble your pasty base and you can glue this point or stitch it we use the same exact technique we just did to create the fabric covers for the top part of our pasties using the same circular object trace it out and now add about a half an inch of seam allowance to the outside of that. Pin your fabric pieces together and simply cut that out. Use your ruler to find the center point of your fabric circles and use the same technique again to find the midpoint between the two quarters in order to draw a line indicating where you need to make notches and this will indicate where you need to make a dart here i'm also pinning the center of the circle and then flipping it on the other side and marking it with a pen so that i can see where i'm supposed to sew to and this will give you the exact same shape as your pasty base, which is super nice when you want to start gluing it together. Here I am pinning my fabric to my pasty base, leaving a little bit of an edge between the pasty base and the fabric so that I can get in there here and glue it down. This glue is called Fabric Tack. It's wonderful. You can sew through it and it dries fairly quickly. So this process goes much faster. Now make notches about a half an inch apart. This will help so that you can fold the fabric around the base and it won't wrinkle. Put fabric tack on the end of each tab and simply fold over the previous one until you have a nice round and clean pasty base. Next up, we'll make the interior lining, so to speak. I'm just using craft foam. Again, I'm using my same circle shape, but I'm taking the circle down a little bit, probably a quarter of an inch it looks about. You don't have to line your pasties. I prefer it. And also craft foam may not always be the best option. If you use double-sided tape on your pasties, it can peel off the craft foam interior. Using my ruler shape, I am again finding the center point. And different from this time, I've decided to just make a snip and fold it inside the pasty until it fits about right. I've used a um, pen there that you don't see to mark where I need to cut. And now I'm using some contact cement to adhere it all together. You want to make sure to apply your contact cement to either side and then wait a bit. I think with this stuff, I typically wait around one or two minutes. And it allows each side to get really tacky and then it bonds very strong. As you can see here, it's already solid. Going back really quick to talk about lining your pasty again. If you don't want to use craft foam, you can use fabric, or you can also do a few layers of glue on the inside, and that works great. Whatever works best for you that you've found, depending on what you use to adhere your pasties to your body. 
Adding trim to your pasties can make them look super fancy. Here I'm adding a pearl and crystal trim, simply stitching it on around the edges. So far so good, although I will say the inside could be a little bit better. <laughs> Our molds are done. They took about an hour to cure. I like to get them out of the mold a little bit before they're fully done so that I can bend them. Sometimes this works and sometimes they pop back to a flat shape. So I'll show you another technique about how to get the plastic parts to mold around a shape a little bit later. Once you have them how you want them, it's time for painting. I had some silver spray paint, so I figured that's what I would go with for the purposes of this tutorial. A coat or two of spray paint should be enough. You can also use acrylic paint if you don't have access to a ventilated area to paint in. So as you can see, my pieces, it went back to flat. So very easily grab your heat gun hold a bit for, far away. You don't want to overheat the plastic and cause it to bubble. And you can tell it's ready to be bent when it starts to sag a little bit. You can see how flexible it becomes. And it's quite nice to work with. It's not too hot to touch. And I'm simply able to press it to the shape that I want it. And I hold it there for quite a while until it holds the shape on its own. Now I'm taking a little bit of black paint and adding some age to these silver pieces. I love how shiny they are when they're full silver, but adding a little bit of a low light and weathering to it makes it look more dimensional. And this is the technique used in metallic spray paints to make them look like metal. So uh, you can see the difference here. It's a little bit of a black paint can do. Next, we'll adhere the pieces to our pasty. I am using a pencil since it's the same color as my plastic piece, and I'm tracing out where the piece lies on the pasty. And now I'll uh, put the contact cement on uh, either side. Be very careful at this point on your pasty. This stuff is yellow, so if you stay within your traced out shape, you won't see any of it but you don't want that to mar the work that you've just done if you have a big glop of yellow glue hanging out. And fill in the space and wait a little bit and then stick those puppies together. Ta-da! Spoop! One quick thing to note, you might have to make your pasties one at a time, or at least the molds, as uh, most silicone molds only have one shape in each mold, so you'll have to run another process of curing a liquid plastic piece. It's no big deal, it only takes about an hour. At this point, your pasties can be done, or you can do an added step. This is XTC3D. It is a two to one resin mixture. I've used it before. It's really user friendly and super easy. I've added some gold pigment powder. I mostly wanted to see what this would do. Coating your pasties with resin will seal in any paint job you've done, but it will also make your pasties hard. So this is a good thing to do if you need a more firm base. Adding the pigment powder changed the color of the pasty a bit, and it also doled out some of the weathering I'd done. So here I'm just touching it up with some black paint. All in all, this is a cool effect, depending on what you're going for. As you can see, it looks quite different from the original fabric ones. And I'll do a side-by-side -side here in just a moment. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I hope this helps you in your pasty-making journey, and as always, happy crafting!